So I had a couple of different developer tools I wanted to play with. I figured I'd combine them together into one little demo and see uh, what I built and what I think of these two different tools. So first I have the WooCommerce Create Woo extension uh, package. Um, this basically scaffolds like a custom Woo settings screen for you. It has uh, React built, so it's like a React powered admin screen. Um, it's pretty cool. It's actually really just based off of the WordPress create block package. So if you've used that to scaffold the blocks, it's literally the same thing. It's just a different template that they've created where uh, the files that get created are built for an admin screen. It does a lot of the like registering the admin screen for you, all that stuff. Um, and then it handles the build process with WordPress scripts, just like a WordPress create block package. Second thing I'm using is AI services, which is a plugin, but really a framework uh, by Felix Arntz. And it's really a way for hopefully more developers to integrate AI into their plugins or themes, maybe, I don't know, plugins mainly, um, using like one universal framework. So it gives you a place to register API keys um, or for like your user to add their API keys. It has a little playground where you can kind of mess around with stuff and it has uh, PHP and JavaScript, um, like basically like frameworks to just handle communicating with AI. So you don't have to like write a lot of that by hand, uh, super handy to speed things up. Um, so I have that, I have those and let's look at what I built and then we'll just look a little bit at the code. So it's really nothing too exciting. I just wanted to kind of try both things and see what happened. Um, so I created this AI bundle generator admin screen. So the way that the create Woo extension works is it makes you a little settings page that shows up under the WooCommerce menu. And then it gives you a couple like demo components and stuff. I took out most of that. Um, but this here, this is like a WooCommerce component. So what we're going to do is we're going to search for some products. We're going to search for our beanie with a logo. And you could tell I didn't really mess around too much with the styling here. Um, and t-shirt with the logo. What's nice is that this search, this product search component right here is uh, already made. Like I didn't have to do anything. I just literally pop in a React component and it handles that. Then once I got the products, I did have to do a little like WordPress data fetching, you'll see. So I've got two products, I have some buttons here. I'm gonna generate a bundle description. So this is where the AI comes in. So the premise here is I'm, I'm gonna pick a couple of products and I'm gonna make a bundle and then I'm gonna let AI take the descriptions of those products and combine it into one nice description that I can use for my combo product. Um, and then I think he just added support in the AI plugin for image generation. So I'm not sure I would, I wonder if I could like pass the images and get some sort of generated image as well. So here's our response um, from uh, generated bundle. So I took the, the beanie with logo and a t-shirt with the logo and it generated this bundle that's a beanie and t-shirt with logo together. And you can see it wrote a bunch of like text. It basically takes the descriptions of these two and it asks AI to make like a combo. So it's like our exclusive corporate essentials combo two must have items. So it's really just doing the scaffolding of writing all of that stuff for like a bundle product. And I just wanted to see what it would how it would do. And then we can actually hit this and what it's gonna do is create the actual product as a new product in WooCommerce and head over and edit it. And so here we go. Here's our new product. It even added the images. It added the correct things here. It's a grouped product. So it has the grouped product uh, assigned in here. So it's kind of like ready to go. I think the one nice thing would be that AI product image would be a cool thing. So nothing too exciting, not the greatest plugin, probably uh, not gonna uh, be something I would ever release other than the code is open source, but it was just a cool experience to get to see, all right, what components can we kind of mess around with in WooCommerce and how easy is it to integrate AI services, uh, Felix's plugin into our framework. So let's jump over to the code and just see what that looked like. So when I ran the command, it scaffolded this plugin um, and you can see here, it's kind of just a standard plugin. I've added AI services as a plugin dependency, which is a cool thing in WordPress where you can basically say, don't let somebody turn on this plugin until they install this other plugin. Um, so that's a pretty cool thing. What's nice about that is if other plugins start using AI services, and here I can even show you what it looks like. If other plugins start using it, um, they can require it too. And then you can just have one sort of like one plugin that's just feeding all these different things and you're not like duplicating these libraries or getting weird versions of it um, super handy so you can see here you can't get rid of the plugin until my ai bundle generator is deactivated um so they give you some like vendor auto load. so there's some like composer dependencies 
in the extension namespaces, that's kind of nice. Um, we got a few other things, um, some errors, some blah, blah, blah. I'm, this is all just scaffold code that it gave us. Um, but essentially, it makes a little class under the includes folder. And this is where it really does the work of setting up your plugin. And all it really does is enqueue the scripts and add the admin menu. This is so this part is kind of WordPress stuff where we're just registering the JavaScript files because you know when you're building plugins that are React powered, you gotta enqueue all the JavaScript in the correct spot. So it handles that for you in here, um, which is pretty nice. And then it also does this WooCommerce like registering the admin page. And so that's how you get it to show up in the menu and all that sort of stuff. So nothing too fancy here, but it's just nice whenever you have a scaffold and you don't have to do it yourself. Then they just give you this index.js file with a simple React component. Um, and this is where you kind of build everything. I'll scroll to the bottom because that's kind of the important part. It's basically you're making a little React component that's your setting screen. And then it's going to use this filter to add it to the navigation. So it becomes part of the WooCommerce like admin React app. And so all this stuff is honestly stuff I didn't have to think about or do. It just did it all for me. So that was kind of already there to go. What I did is all this stuff where I built out the UI using a mixture of WooCommerce components and uh, WordPress like Gutenberg components. So for example, you can see there's these woo.section and woo.search, which handled like our product search. So those are the components that come from WooCommerce, whereas over here, there's like the grid component and the card component. And I think I use the button. Those ones I pull from WordPress. Uh, the like Gutenberg component library. So it's kind of a mixture of the two, but uh, you know, it gets the job done. There's a look, you know, when we look at the UI for that screen, you know, there's a little bit of a difference between like this search and like the button. That's not like a one-to-one, -one, but um, overall pretty close. So you can see here, I mean, it's just really like a lot of this code. I just kind of like threw up cursor kind of helped me out a lot, um, but essentially the code is pretty like pretty much in order of what happens. You can do a search to find some products. Once you have some products, we show them in like a grid with some cards. Um, we give you some buttons to, to do some AI generation stuff. And then once that shows up, we, we go on and so forth. But what's really cool is how the AI services stuff worked. So there's a few different functions in here that are kind of interesting. One is that I can get my AI service using the normal WordPress use select, which is like where you get um, any React, like any block editor data, any block data, anything like that's part of like the central data store. So um, this, this plugin has its own data store that you just like integrates with the WordPress one. So if you're used to using that, it works just the same way, which is really nice. And I get available service, which is basically saying like, hey, does this person have like an open AI key? Do they have a Gemini key? Do they have some sort of API key? we can use. And if they don't, then, you know, don't render anything because there's nothing we can do. Um, we have a function where we were searching for our products. Um, by default, the product searcher here only shows, only returns like the name and the thumbnail. I think like you only, you only get a little bit of information. So once I get the products, I did have to go back and do like a WordPress query to get, um, get my products like from the API endpoint. So and get like the full data. Like I needed the thumbnail, like I needed the, the permalink, the thumbnail, the ID, the category, the description. Like I needed the full post object. So we had to kind of layer that on ourselves. It was not too hard. I think I ended up having to open up some other blocks and crack them open to figure out the best way to do that. But then finally, this is the kind of part I wanted to hone in on. This is a, a function that I just called generate. It's really not a great name for it. Um, where I get the products that they've selected, and this is what runs when they say, hey, all right, generate that description. Um, and what's really cool is that service that I got, I can just run a generate text. Um, I don't have to think about what model. I could if I wanted to, but I don't have to think about what model, what connection, API keys, anything like I didn't have to think about any of that stuff. All of that was just handled by the plugin itself. Um, and here I just you know tell it to generate a product description for a combo product that includes the following products. And then I have, uh, like I just combined the name and description from the two different products and I send that. And when I get it, um, I use 
this function to grab it from the response. Um, Cause you know, when you send something to the API for an AI, you always get like a million different things and it's like a, <laughs> a bunch of different stuff and like all the, you know, other data that comes with it. So uh, he has a nice helper function to just get the text and that's my new text. And then I just set it um, in the state. And then later, if they want, there's the actual process of creating the new bundle product. And this is, again, just like standard WordPress, you know, um, JavaScript stuff where I kind of build the post object of what I want to be. And I just send it through the REST API using API fetch. And again, it's like, so nice thing here is I don't have to think about authentication, any of that sort of stuff. It's sort of all handled for me. And so it does the full product, kind of resets some of the state and submits it. So there's really not too much going on here. I think I just wanted to demo this because what's really cool is number one, the AI services plugin, which is super handy because it just gives you the ability to make these API calls in a way where you're not thinking about all the infrastructure. And what's really nice is if I at one point decide, actually, I want it to be a specific model that I think is better, or I want some sort of hierarchy of models, that's really handy. I can do that. Um, if I, if some other new integration that, you know, we all think is really great, you know, Grok becomes really popular or something and has an API and he adds this the support to it. It's easy for me to add that support because I don't have to do anything. Um, lots of cool stuff like that that come from using uh, AI services as a framework, and I'm really hopeful that we'll see this become kind of a new standard for it. And it was really great using the WooCommerce-like extension thing because uh, I didn't have to build the screen. It used to be a lot of work to build admin screens. Um, it used to just be a lot of repetitive code. So being able to just generate that I did use cursor a lot for this to generate stuff, but I will say, I don't think my prompting was very good. Um, I think when you're going to do that sort of stuff, the best thing you can do is start with a scaffold from the pers from the software that you're working on. So in this case, I got a scaffold from WooCommerce to start with, because I think if I would have started with an empty directory, I think it would have taken me much longer and I would have ended up with something a lot weirder. It was a lot nicer to start with the entire plugin and admin screen completely ready to go using the more modern WooCommerce stuff. And I, there was things I wouldn't have known about and that I got to learn from it. So if you have any ideas of things that you want to build with AI, WordPress, WooCommerce, like mixing all this stuff together, give me some ideas. I would love to keep um, messing around with this. Um, I think there's a lot of ideas to bring AI into this stuff, but there's also a lot of maybe low hanging fruit. And so this being a kind of a prime example. So if you have other things you would like to see, let me know.